All right, we're live. Ryan Glitzky, welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing, man? I'm I'm happy to have you here. You're in my backyard. I, I am. <laughs> we're down at Seven Springs here in Pennsylvania for the Total Archery Challenge, and Ryan and I guess we've been friends on social media for quite a while yeah, now yeah. and following along and you came to the mountain buck scouting camp yeah, and yeah. got to hang out with you and do some scouting with you and i just i'm excited to get to get to be able to have you on yeah it's cool man it's cool like i said i'm i'm not far from here about 20 minutes so i figured i'd swing up here and take a walk around the booth and then said hey let's do a podcast so yeah here we are i know and i was i was upset because you invited me to come over yeah. the, the house uh one of these nights but uh with everything going on with the yeah. event wasn't going to be able to so i was glad you were able to to stop by and and get to hang yeah. out with the moose himself yeah bullshit some whitetails yeah so i first of all i want to i want to ask the the nickname moose where'd that come from uh <laughs> i was probably early 20s um started lifting and uh God just blessed me with some good genetics, and I touched weights. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, somebody called me that, um, and it just stuck with me for the last couple of decades. You know, yeah. just with my weight training and all that stuff, it just it just stuck. So that's what I go by now. Yeah, and you you love you love working out and yeah. weight training and yep. and everything, and and I I love working out too. Yeah. And and so talk a little bit about that part. I guess uh, of your background. You know what I I've been doing it for I think I was twenty two twenty three when I started and. Uh, at a time, it was all about how much you could lift, how big you could get. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And over the last couple of years, I'm getting old. And so things are starting to change now, and I'm gearing my workouts towards whitetails. Um, I lift typically three, four days a week, um, but the rucking, that, that's what I'm starting to incorporate two, three days a week, and that's a big difference. You know, uh, I'm trying to lean down a little bit, uh, be, a, be a mini moose, I guess you could say. I'm trying <laughs> to lean down some. Um, I'm probably going to run about 15, 20 pounds lighter than I normally do in the fall. Um, but you, you start hiking up these big hills, and these big mountains, um, day in and day out, getting up 3, 30, 4 o'clock, and hunting dark to dark and rut and all that stuff. Um, that wears on you. You know, yeah. you have to be, you know, not only in mentally great shape, but physically wise, you know, you have to be in good shape. If you want to do it and be consistent on whitetails, um, you got to look at your health and, and your well-being for sure. No, definitely. And and I, I totally agree with that. And like, I, I feel like people sometimes gawk at the fact that like saying you need to be in shape to whitetail hunt and you don't, you don't no, need you to. you don't, no. But... I can tell you one thing, it'll help a hell of a lot. Oh, like you said, when you know how it is. You, it's November 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. You know, you've already been a stand eight, nine days in a row, dark to dark. That just beats your ass. It, you know what I mean? And if you're in good shape, watching your diet, stuff like that, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, you know? just if you eat clean based on, and, and I'm, I'm one of those people that I don't believe like there's like one diet or anything going to fall. Let your body tell you. Oh, yeah. Let yep. your body tell yep. you what, yep. what you're able yep. to have. Like for me, I, after having Lyme's disease, I have both a, a gluten and dairy allergy. Mm-hmm. So those things, I, they're not going to kill me if I have them, but I don't feel good. Yeah. So like yeah. I know if I want to be yep. at my best, I can't have yep. those things. There's certain I, I like having breakfast. I like having these. I ha, so I have things that I've learned oh, yeah. how my body reacts, and and I like a lot of food. So I snack all day. That's what I do. <laughs> I, I take I take a one gallon Ziploc freezer bag yes. down in my pack, and and I have it broke down. Like say at nine thirty in the morning, I have this snack. Eleven thirty, I have my lunch. Then two o'clock snack, and it, it, it helps with the all day grinds. But it's so important to have those snacks all day to, to keep you in the game, I guess, you know? Well, how keep funny. sane. It's so funny you say that because, like, I, I do the same thing. I have gallon Ziploc bag, which that, that came from my Western hunting because I put yeah. all my day's food in there, and it also mm-hmm. acts as a trash bag, and you yep, seal yep, up, yep. and the scent yep. goes away and everything. And But you, I create the – like, I have the same thing that I eat every day that I'm yeah. in the tree because it just makes it simple for me. Yep, I, can, same here. I can break it same up here. and have them ready to go. And, yeah, you put these milestones. Sometimes I don't make it to the milestone, say, like, the 9 o'clock break. Yeah. Sometimes it's eight fifteen, and I need that bar yeah. to keep me going. Yeah. It, and, and the big <laughs> thing, me too, is it try to stay away from the sugars. You know, those yep. little Debbie Kate stuff. I try. I may have a treat in there during the day, um, but I try to eat, you know keep my fats up and my carbs. But I try to eat somewhat healthy. Yep. Um, because you you get a sugar kick, it's you're gonna crash, and then you know. 10 15 in the morning when he comes cruising through you're not paying attention and you're gonna be in trouble you know yeah you gotta stay on your aim game a game all the time so uh what uh what what are your favorite snack what do you take into the tree with you uh trying to think what like think back see what i have i mean for lunch it's always a bagel sandwich just with salami and cheese something basic air um i use uh, a couple sports like like the wilderness athlete stuff like that to keep me going through the day i do a little bit of that fiber energy 
Um, snack wise, I try to keep. Let me say, I'm trying to think back here, putting on a spot here, trying to think what the hell I use. Uh, there's little, there's little lunchable cheese sticks, pill and eat. Yep. Um, some of that would be in my lunch. Um, you know, I, I, you know, you got your normal crackers and stuff like that. Your protein bars, are certain ones. Yep. I try to stay from the ones that are you know high in sugar and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. Um, like I said, I'll have a. You know, there might be a, a hostess cake or something in there for lunch. Just, <laughs> yeah. just something to break it up. You know what I mean? But I'm usually every year I experiment a little, find what what works for me, and, and kind of stick to it. You know, but like I said, I about three times a day I eat and, and uh, kind of break up the you know the, the, the all day event. You know? Yeah, I that I've I've come down like I eat mostly like different types of bars, but I'll have yeah. like. I'll have I, I like the pro bar meals yeah. a lot, like the pro bar stuff. One because I can eat them because they don't have uh, gluten and dairy in them, so I feel good. But there's like the meal bars that have like yeah. five or six hundred calories in them, yeah. so they're like my like almost like my lunch thing. I have one of their protein bars, and then um, then I'll have Heather's Choice makes these little packaroons. Yeah, those things are super yeah. good. A little coconut yeah. cookies, and and I'll have those, and and they're high in fats yeah. and stuff. And I I I do well with high fat high pro- yeah, protein that's, type that's stuff. what i try to deal with and so i i have those in there i always have like a little trail mix thing that yep. that has a little more sugar in it but it's yep. kind of that little treat yep thing yep. that that i like to have i like to have some sort of um um almost like a meat stick basically like if if it isn't something that's my own thing f-bomb makes yeah really I, yeah, good yep. i use i th- f-bomb i use a lot of their uh their peanut butter or their yeah yeah, yeah. i use a lot of those um yep. that's a good pick me up their sticks also yep i yep. use those yep yep and then i also do the i have that the mountain ops ignite I, I just poured some in before this yep. uh, this podcast here yep. but 200 milligrams of caffeine yeah, yeah there's uh there's a lot of caffeine going on and uh, once that late <laughs> october november rolls around there is, yeah, it's bad. A scary amount. <laughs> yeah, of it's, it's scary. You start the morning off coffee. You're drinking yep. something on the way in, and then mid morning, midday, and <laughs> mid afternoon yep. seems like you're you're polishing something off there, you know, to keep you going. So you know, it's funny. I it's funny we got into this topic because. A while ago, I got a question from somebody that I asked about what they wanted to hear in the podcast. Like, I want to hear what what kind of snacks you take. Yeah, he's like, what? Like yeah. something different that's not you know what you typically talk yeah. about tactics. Yeah, I use, like, it's like those Belvitas. I think they're called. They have different snacks. Like, there's all kinds of stuff I've tried <laughs> around. You know, yeah, it's. It's uh, it's part of the addiction. Yeah, you know what I mean, you gotta eat. <laughs> you gotta eat. I, I don't know how people don't eat. Oh, I, dr- I I hear guys that take just like a bar or a, a thing of water with them yeah. all day. I die. I'd be done by ten o'clock. No, I, no way. <laughs> There's no way. No way. I like I, to eat. I need to help myself as much as I can. I need to stay warm in the tree. Yeah. As best I can. Yeah. I need to stay dry. I need to be fed well. And yeah. I need to have water, yeah. caffeine. Yeah. And if you can do that. I can stick around. Yeah. I mean, as as hard ass as I proclaim to be i can be a bitch too you yeah. know, a little bitch up here if i don't get what i don't have what i want you yeah know? <laughs> uh, it's funny and and the other thing you said uh back a little while ago about you, you know you're lifting regimen and trying to lift as much as you can i i was never trying to like i got i was big into lifting in college and all my buddies were i never was trying to be like the biggest guy yeah. out there or anything but what i want to do was i had an old book a log of my dad's weightlifting records that yeah. he did in, in college and whatever he had like his max bench his max this like I, my goal was to beat that yeah yeah and then yeah i did i remember i i beat his uh bench press uh record that he had in, not record with himself his personal best yeah. um in college and then i ended up with uh tendonitis in both my oh, yeah. <laughs> shoulders and yeah. all this stuff and i went away from the the yeah. heavy stuff for the most part i still i still like you know like deadlift and squat and then yeah. i do like i do i do all of those those yeah. movements still just not at yeah. the the weights that i was trying to yeah i've always lifted heavy for like I said about two decades and i blew my tricep out last year and that was kind of like yeah yeah time to Time to put the heavy stuff down and change my workout, you know. Yeah. I'm uh, getting too old for that shit. Yeah, time to change it yeah, up yeah, a little bit. Yeah, No, I, I, I hear you there. And rocking is such a good oh. tool. Like, I, I used to run a lot, and I still like running sometimes. But rucking is, is so applicable to what we do. Yeah. Um, and it's less it's not as bad on your knees you don't need to no. throw you don't need to throw a ridiculous amount of weight in there you know i'll throw 30 pounds that, in that's there. what i do about 30 to 40 is what yeah. i do yep. usually yep. yep but i have a pack it's sitting behind you right now with the sand 30 pound sand pack yep, that's what it. i put in my and yep. and then it ends up after the pack weight and your water and snacks wherever you got in there yep. you end up about yeah because i figure you know every saturday i'm in the woods and i figure that counts as rucking with yeah. my pack and everything on and then usually like I said during a week two or three times and it is such a benefit yeah. I, I i actually i think you were the first one i heard about it 
and I kind of Googled it. I'm like, what the rocking? You know what I mean? And then I started getting into more, and I started trying, and, and I've, I fell in love with it. it. You just get a full body workout, the cardiovascular, everything with it. It, it all applies to what we do. Yeah, you're, you got your back involved. You got your yep. core. Your, yep. you keep well, I'm sore next yeah. day. Yep. Yeah, your yep. legs, yep. Your, your hip flexors, all those different yep. things. And it just, it helps. Like, And the whole thing with me, too, with working out – not even from the physical aspect, but the mental aspect of getting up every single day to go into that tree during the rut and yeah. make it happen where I get up every morning to work out. And that's like my discipline. Yes. There. So then it's yeah. not, it's not out of the ordinary yeah. when you have to do it. Yeah. It, it, like I said, a lot of this comes down to that mental game and, and then you learn a lot of it in the off season like that, you know, because yeah. when it comes down to it, that's, that's what separates the guys that are consistent. Is yeah. That mental game, you know, you know, they, they've built the physical part of it, but which is, it leads into your mental aspect of it too. You know what I mean? You have to be mentally strong um to do this consistently yeah i i totally agree and like just like the, the the and you can do it without adding any extra time like you said using rucking while you're scouting yeah you're yep. you're huge on putting boots on the ground yeah. all yep. the time yep. all year i pretty much i mean i'm big in the postseason but even the summer you're know, hanging cameras and i'm not a big fan of summer scouting you know what i mean um but i do it i wander off all the time you know yeah. what i mean and get into <laughs> stuff but um but yeah boots on the ground you know and that's what i i figured saturday is just another day of training too yeah you know the pack on your back no definitely so do you um actually before i get in the next thing i want to go back a little bit have you always been like this ingrained in white tails or like when when did that click for you i mean i started when i was my dad took me out when i was 14 just like all of us you know, and me went out there rifle hunting the first day stuff like that and i was actually really big into fishing like uh 9 10 11 12 i love fishing there was a lake near my house so i had what a passion now i had for fish for a few years and then my dad took me out when i was 14 and uh be honest i killed a doe the first year and i was hooked and it, it, I, it every year i told myself it can't get worse it gets worse <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thank god for my wife you yeah. know what i mean it, she she supports me but every time i don't think i can get any have any more of a passion for this it, it, it just it, it doubles i swear every year it's horrible yeah. <laughs> it's bad <laughs> I, I, lo- I love hearing it because you can hear it. You can oh. hear it in your voice. I talk to people like you. I talk to people like Johnny Stewart. Oh, yeah. Greg Litzinger. John, yeah, yep. like all you guys, like, yep. when you talk to them, you, you get fired up oh, as yeah. you start talking about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Get me going, <laughs> man. I'm ready to get in a tree. Let's go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and and I, love, I love the scouting part I of am. it. Honestly, probably more than sitting in a tree. I, you know, I, like I've said this before on podcasts. You know, we're, we're all chasing the top of that mountain with the walk up on whatever you're happy with. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't care if it's a doe or a buck or whatever it is. Um, but for me, that next notch down is the, especially postseason scouting. I love scouting the postseason. I can't wait for next year to scout. No. And uh, you know, I, I enjoy going out now too. I like doing it all year. It just sucks when it's nine degrees and bugs you oh. know, a little bit. But you know, it's it's part of the game. You know, it's part of it. But man, I love especially postseason i mean there's there's walking up on that, that big buck you've been chasing and then there's right below it's that scout and i absolutely love the postseason it's yeah. so much just it's always it's i could tell people it's almost like walking up on a good buck because you find that hot spot like that you're you put so many miles in you walk up on that golden ticket it's like shit it, you know it yeah. you do this long enough and i get so fired and you that. you visualize it and you yeah. just get that you get that feeling oh, yeah. and that, you know. that moment yep and you know, it's one of those things like when you find those those like hot spots, like when you're out scouting. One of the, I was talking to my cousin Mason about it, who you met at the, the scouting yeah. camp, and Mason's like one of those people that he Mason kills big bucks every year, and but like you ask him like specific tactics, a lot of times he's just like I, I feel it, like he just, yeah. because he's it's, been doing it for so long, and that's why you know like when you get to one of those spots. Yeah. But what I started doing really from doing this podcast, and then and then kind of teaching some of that stuff it made me ask more wise than like of like why you know sometimes you notice it's a good spot and then you got to figure out why yeah. afterwards I, I think the key is when when you get to a certain point doing this is the confidence you have um just doing it for so long you go by your gut like yeah. you're not just you know you're not you're, you're not trying to figure all these tactics for this area you, you know what i mean trying to break yeah. it down so much in that you're going off your gut feeling I need to be here and you listen to that. Then you kind of figure out why. Yeah. But you get to a certain point, I try to tell guys, uh, it's really hard to explain, you know, because every situation is different. But now on me, my gut tells me to be here at this certain time or that certain tree, I'm listening because usually it pans out. That's what I've learned. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree with that. And so, yeah, your gut is your b- yeah. biggest teacher, but you don't get that gut feeling until you have that experience. Yeah, it takes a while. And that's why I try to tell guys, this is not going to happen overnight. You can listen to the podcast, YouTube. You got to get in the timber. 
between scouting and time in the stand, and it takes a couple years. Be patient. Like I've told people before, um, find something that works for you and, and get good at it before – you know, some guys are awesome bed hunters, like Jake Bush, Dan Infault. Some guys are awesome rut hunters. You know, find something that you're good at, works for your area, get good at it. Get damn good at it. Get consistent at it. Then, let's bring in something else here. Let's start early. So like me, I'm not real great in early October. I suck. I've killed some bucks, but that's where I'm seeing some of these big ones, early October, mid-October. That's where I'm starting to hone my skills now. Right, I'm fine. Come into October, November, I'm pretty confident. But it's that early, mid-October I'm trying to get good at now. Yeah, I, I'm same way. You and I, you and I we, when we scouted together yeah. at scouting camp, you and I, we looked we looked at sign very similarly. Yeah, yeah. And even my dad, too. Yeah. And because we're primarily rut hunters. Rut hunters, yep. And then we had, you know, people like Kenny that were yeah. in there that were showing us tree types yeah, and yeah, teaching yeah. us, oh, this is how you kill them in the early yeah, season. Yeah, I suck at that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? and that's important. You figured early October, mid October, when them food sources get yeah. somebody like Johnny, he could tell you every damn blade of grass here. You know oh, what I mean? know. You, you know that's the kind of knowledge that I'm trying to learn. Yeah, you know stuff like that. You know, you know? The, and the thing with Johnny with learn, looking at like the plant species, I've also learned. That Johnny has names for plant species that might not really be <laughs> that, but it, it works for him because it he, doesn't that's surprise how he does me, it. but it yeah. works for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he knows it, and he yeah. knows exactly. Yeah. Oh, the deer like this this yeah. time of year, and I'm like, yep. I, I, that's again, I've said it on here before, but that's like a goal of mine to learn more of that and build that yeah. into that, yeah. so that I, I can be more successful at different times yes. of the year yes. and, and become yeah. better at it. Yeah. And Johnny with the late season stuff, like uh, yeah, he's same thing, great yeah, with him, that, yep. and yep. and. And I think that is a really good time that you could kill bucks. I just never hunted them that same much. Same here. Same here. Especially PA, it's print. always, you know, after our gun pressure, uh, it's really, really tough after gun pressure. Yeah. You know? um, that, that makes it tough here in PA for late season, in my opinion. Yeah. So what do you, you know, I know you don't do like a ton of like summer scouting, but what what do you do? Like, do you run cameras and stuff? It, cameras the my, is like right now, um, once Memorial Day there, I started getting cameras. I run between, you know, 30, 40, I'd say I run. Um, most of my locations are already predetermined from my postseason scouting or historical, you know, years of, of areas. I pretty much know the tree, scrape, whatever it's going to go on. And that's pretty much my summer um, is hanging cameras. But even like today, I was out today. I got detoured, went somewhere else. It happens. I do a little in, little summer scouting, and especially in newer areas. I see something. To me, it doesn't hurt. I don't think it really boogers them bucks up too much, especially this time of year. No. Uh, but pretty much summers is just getting inventory, seeing what kind of quality bucks I have in the area. So then I know the areas I want to concentrate on come fall. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel very similar to you in that. Like, I, I look at summer as a time where I'm do, getting other things done, whether it's yeah. around the house, doing yeah. that. To do but list. I, I, I get cameras out, which doesn't take as much time as like postseason scouting, yeah. where I'm trying to cover as much ground as possible and all the time. I might go yeah. out once every seven to 10 days, yeah. maybe. And I'll go through a cycle of hitting cameras. Cause yeah. I, I run, I run the same amount of cameras. Yeah. You do. I like, like I said, I, it, some guys like, why are you bring them out so early? I said, I try to hang 30, 40 cameras. It takes a little bit. Yeah. You, know, you get four or five out in a day. Um, but I won't touch these cameras till maybe mid July. The first ones I put up Memorial day. Um, but usually I like a minimum of four weeks to six weeks. Uh, that's typical where I prefer, before I like to go and check my first card in the summer. Yeah. Um, so I basically get like two card pulls in the summer. Um, end of August is tip, begin September. Labor Day is typically my last before that fall kind of trend. Yeah, that, that shit. You know, kind of know what we got in the area a little bit. How are you running your cameras in the summertime? <clears throat> um, I run mine on video mode. I, I Very rare I run picture anymore. Um, let's the cell cam, of course, you know. But I don't run many cell cams in the summer. Um, I don't. Cell cam, I prefer an SD video on video. That's overall, if you give me a choice, that's what I want. Um, but I run 30 second videos with a 20 second delay. Um, I run mine up a tree about eight, nine, ten foot uh, between bears and people. That seems to help a little bit. People are getting ballsier now. I'm starting to notice. Uh, one thing with that too, I've noticed is uh, I couldn't even tell you last time I've had a deer react to one of my cameras being up in a tree like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, th- them bucks don't seem to really pay attention to them yep. being up elevated. Um, but that's pretty much what I do. And I pretty much, um, pretty much strictly scrapes. Um, I used to run some mineral licks. I talked about this last week on my Instagram story. Um, for me, I don't know if it's a public land thing or what, um, I'd run some mineral licks in areas I could, you know, it was legal, legal, yeah. or it was legal to. And I'd get some great bucks, 130, 40, 50 inch deer showing up in the summer. But once I pulled that mineral lick in the shift, I never see him again. Now on my scrapes, different story. 
a vast majority of them bucks I'd still see. So this year I've actually come off some of these food sources where I typically put a mineral lick, um, and some of these scrapes, I, that's where I'm starting to run these cameras. And I wouldn't classify them as a testosterone-driven scrape, yeah. even though they're hitting a rut, or a primary community-type scrape. If there's something in between, yeah. I don't know what you want to call them. Um, but I'm kind of going to run them there this year on some of those food locations, see if I get them big bucks on there, and see if that transitions a little more towards fall instead of running a mineral lick in some of these areas. Yeah, I, 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 I like that idea a lot. And one of the things that I, I go, I have a mixture too. Like I run, I do use mineral licks yeah. um, where you're able to yeah um and but the, yeah the thing is like okay so i'll run something on a mineral lick and I, I got a buck there was there's one like there's certain mineral licks i have that are freaking great like, yeah yeah i'll get like same here yep. dozen every bucks, year i'm gonna have a big shooter you know runner. dozen bucks yep. and big deer that are coming yep. in mature bucks and then they spread out they yep. spread out like crazy and they'll go like my uncle killed one of the bucks i was filming in the summer it was like five and a half miles away during mm-hmm. the rut yeah and yeah, the rut can take him away, but I don't think he lived there. That was just, yeah. it was a good summering location. And, but what I've found is like, if you can find like specific stuff, like, like food sources during the summer, like newer clear, they're like three to five year old clear cuts yeah. and run them on those scrapes that are on the edge of yes. them, maybe close to some hemlocks that have some shade, you yeah. know, that they can, they can bed in yeah. and stuff. And, and what I look at those mineral licks, this is just my opinion. Um, Cause I know a lot of people have a lot of success over that. Yeah. It translates in the fall, but for me, it's an unnatural movement. Yeah. The scrape is a natural movement. That's kind of what I'm playing off of now with that, not utilizing them anymore because I'm not – like a lot of times I put that mineral like not far off a of bean field or crop field, stuff like that. But I'm back off for a little more now. A little close to that bedding, I guess you could say, stuff like that. So I'm real curious to see how these scrapes work, you know, translate through fall because then you're more of a natural movement. I might not pick that buck up again on that scrape. But now I do see him 200 yards away or a quarter mile away on another scrape. You know, yeah. before, like I said, I would just never see damn things anywhere. You know what I mean? A lot of times my bucks in the summer, I may lose them, but I can see them again in a rut eventually. Yeah. yeah I've noticed that. No, I, I, I agree with scrapes. that. And, and, and scrape, like summer scrape cameras, I've had such mixed results. Like I, I, I will not sit here and say that I can like look at a scrape and be like, oh, this is definitely where all the big bucks are going to yeah, hit. It's- you can start seeing some trends, but I haven't, I, I'm really been, I've been shifting more, like kind of like you're doing and testing it more, but it's, uh, it's some of them are real good and some of them. Yeah. Are- I mean, the ones that I usually consistently get good bucks on in like say July, mid summer, they're not far off security cover. Even yeah. you know, we, even the fall, we're talking about that a lot. You'll hear a lot of us talk about this, uh, that scrape off security cover. That's the one he's going to usually visit, visit in daylight. I typically see that also in the summer. I'm still not far from a clear cut or some type of security cover. Those are typically where I get a bachelor group of pretty good bucks in the summer or whatever, a couple bucks coming in still. Yeah. In the wide open scrapes, um, there's testosterone driven, like on a scrape line, something like that. I get them. But it's nowhere as consistent as I do on a regular, like a primary community scrape off of some cover. Yeah. You know? Do you doctor up your scrapes at all? Yeah, I use Buck Fever. Um, Troy's got this blend everybody knows about. Yeah, I'm I trying got that yeah, this year. I so got it too. I hear hear a lot of good results. So Troy, you know, we're gonna find out here, bud. Which I'm pretty confident it's gonna be some pretty oh, good yeah. shit because I started using it here, putting my cameras out here the last week. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I got them doctored up with this. I'm really curious to see how it works out. I, I think you'll have good success I, yeah. with it. Yeah. From what I hear, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, I've got, I've got some of Troy's yeah. magical mixture. He's I've, the master, man. He, he's the doctor of this stuff, man. Yeah, like, he so is. I'm just a student. And uh, he, that guy there is very intelligent when it comes to this stuff. Yes, yes, he is. And and I, I, the one thing I want to go back to too is you talk about running your cameras on video, and that was something I just started doing not that long ago because I think a lot of it too is I have a mixture of cameras. Okay, I have really good ones like Exodus cameras, yep. and I have some yep. cheap ones. Yep. My cheap ones I don't run on video because. The quality is so terrible yes. that yes. I, I feel like yep. I, I they're blurry yeah. and I can't get – and the battery life sucks on them. Where Exodus ones are, like, super clear. And, like I said, I have a mixture of – I have Same a mixture here. of them. Yeah. Um, but the, that those ones I typically run on video now more than ever. And and that yeah. and, and especially uh, – I was especially doing it during the fall. And now I have transitioned to the summer scrapes and running those videos because you learn so much about them. You can learn those specific bucks' behaviors and, like, the way that they – they re- you can almost tell by a buck walking or how he works a scrape, no matter what time of year it is, of his mannerisms yes. and what this deer likes to yeah. to do. Yeah, I, I, you pick up so much more information off of, of off of video mode. You know what I mean? Like I said, if you give me, you can give me ten cell cams 
for with, with a pitcher or give me five standard SD cards of video, I'm taking him five all day with video. I, I'm going to learn so much more on video mode than I will. I mean, cell cams have their place. I utilize them. But, man, give me, for long-term historical data, give me the video mode on standard SD. I, I, that's my favorite. That's my go-to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And, yeah, I, I – I run. I have four cell cameras now, um, but and I then I have thirty some regular yeah. regular cameras. I, and, yeah, I picked up some more cell cams. Uh, I've talked about this before, and actually, I, I put a video out today on Instagram a spot that I went to. I thought they were going to clear cut. Um, I had some big bucks on that scrape. I'm I'm, hang, I'm run camera on video mode right now. If they don't clear cut, I'm gonna put a cell cam in there. He, the, there was a couple big shooters that were showing up early October, mid October. It's a very dangerous tactic. You still got there's a lot of woodsmanship still involved. I'm still I waffle back and forth with cell cams on scrapes early to mid October because it's a deadly, deadly tactic for what I've learned. Um, I've never done it myself. This year I probably will give it a go. If I kill a buck, I'll be honest with you. Three, four years in a row, I kill a buck like that. I don't know. My mind might change. You know what I mean? Yeah. I believe they win more than we should. You know what I mean? But that's a definitely a deadly tactic with the cell cams on these early, mid-October uh, hunts on cell, on scrape, excuse me. I'm seeing a ton of information with that. These big bucks, I don't know why, early to mid-October, they're dropping their guard. I mean, you're not far off their bedding. I get it. But on the, on the right scrapes, they're very, probably the most killable, I'm going to say, that I've seen them all year. Well, you, know. you, you actually brought that up at the scouting camp, yeah. and and then you and my dad were going back and forth like, oh, yeah, you know, seeing yeah. the exact yeah. same thing yeah. of that, that the, what 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 time in October, like if there were specific dates um, that well, you were seeing I, around the, it. The one I was scraped as of today, that buck was in there. He's probably in the 150s. He was a pretty big buck. Now, I didn't pull that camera as a standard SD till like November, so I, I didn't know this until afterwards. And I had two other bucks, probably 130s on there. Um, but he was like first week, third, six, seven. You know, he was first week killable. Um but the dates that popped out in my head a lot were, if I remember now, it was like the 13th, 16th, 19th, and like 21st, which you starting to get into that, you know, into the actual pre-rut, the scrape week, I guess you could say. But that thir- the October lull, they call it, yep. um, it definitely no. Now, I do believe there is a lull. Not the law we read about in books, which is all BS, because I see a lot of bucks daylighting, but there's a pressure law you get in October, especially in Pennsylvania, because not only do we got a, an influx of, of, of bow hunters, you got small game kicking in. I think in big guys will in certain and locations. Now, now will, bear season. Yeah, and what happens is on public, what I've noticed on public, I get these bucks even right before the season, they're daylight and doing some stuff. Once that pressure comes, a lot of guys like Scott, week four season, stuff like that. Those big bucks will transition to the private property. The area is closer to the food. They're not getting pressure. They'll come back, but it's hard to kill them early in mid-October. Um, but now what I'm seeing in the big woods, you don't get as much pressure. I'm seeing these big mature bucks early to mid-October on these scrapes like them situations. You yeah, know what I mean, so there is a, a lull if you're in a pressured area, I believe. But it's not what where they think they just lay down do none. I don't believe that. No, you know at all. I I, I totally agree. And my, mine, I've seen on my cameras like. It, it'll fluctuate a little bit with days, but like the 14th to 18th of October, we typically get like a cold front around yeah, that yeah, you snap do. too, yes. and I, and, yeah. and I see, seem to see that. And I'm never in the woods really at that time. Same here. Like I, I always miss yeah. it. I, I probably suck it October because the only time I usually go out, I'll go out like a Friday night, kill a doe or a Saturday if my dad. I honestly, I I'll hunt that first week a little bit. Yeah. But what, like I said, I experience the one area where I can hunt where I work. I get a lot of pressure. That's where I think them bucks will go in a little bit of a lull on the on the public because they transition on that private little yeah. bit. But, yeah, I, I'm saying but I'm not in the woods enough probably in October to capitalize on a lot of this. Yeah, I yeah, I, I, I think about that all the time. Like, you know, late season, early season, all that stuff. Like, how much of it could we potentially be just as successful as during a rut if we put that amount of time yeah. into it? Yeah. It just shifted our mindset. You see a lot of guys. Let I me mean, look at Jake Bush. I mean, oh, yeah. he's a man. Jake, I mean – Right down here, I bet you first day or two he's got a hammer down. You know, oh, guy, yeah. he puts a ton of work in, and he's he keys in on that early season betting and the scrapes, and he, he's awesome at that stuff. Yeah, you he, know? he focuses on it. You're talking yeah. about finding that niche yeah. that and we you focus like. on the rut where yeah. we're successful. Or, you know, Johnny late season, he, he's a monster in the late season. You look at these guys in their niches, and they're really good at. You know, yep. That's exactly right. It's like, yeah, you you, you find those niches because it's difficult to to be good at everything. Yeah, you can't. That's why I said you master one thing before you take the next class. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, yep. Yeah, I to- totally totally agree with that mindset and, and thinking about it and because and you can get too and like even with scouting, I'm not good at I'm not good at having like looking at things from all these different avenues. Like when I go in and I'm like, all right. 
I'm looking at scrapes. I'm looking at the, where the does are bedding. I'm yeah. looking at this. I'm looking at this this rut type mindset. It's so much easier for me to scout and get real information from it than as if I'm trying to like you know take in all these. Well, maybe in late season they get pressured in here or they do that. Yeah, and, yeah. And some of it yeah. I just learned from even having my cameras out. Like I found yeah. a spot. I, I when I pulled all my cameras, I pulled these cameras in this one area in March from last year, and uh, I found two years in a row this one spot. Through the first week of rifle season, there's all these mature bucks living mm-hmm. on this side hill in this old clear cut. That's something. And I was like, okay, that means pressure's obviously yeah, yeah, pushing yeah, them yeah. there. And they feel safe in this yeah. spot. Now, I just, you know, that's why I have it all written down in my notes. I, I actually put it that day scouting. I put it in the journal entry in Spartan Forge. I was like, okay, remember this. So when you go yeah. back, and I still, if I still have a tag yep. in my pocket during you know the rifle where, yep, season, yep, yep. this is where I want to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you learn, you do this long enough, that historical data. It, it's crazy. It's crazy how they, almost to the day. Like, I, I remember chatting with the Exodus and them guys my first. They sort of started talking about the historical data on them cameras, them bucks basically showing up to the day, and I see it. It's crazy in it areas. And like, even what I key on, too, uh, one area hunt I've been pretty consistent at is I'm a big believer once October, end of October, November, and these, these does start popping, you'll learn certain family groups of does will come in a certain time of year. Mm-hmm. You get three or four of those in your back pocket, you kind of know where to start bouncing around if you have all the conditions right and I, you can be very consistent every year doing yeah that. and how important is that and how sm- like how small of a detail uh and, and actually jeff helm who i just had on the podcast before you got in here uh was recording with him he called it i like the method he called it thin threads between the successful and not oh yeah it's that little tiny yeah. thing yeah. that you can do right yeah um, that makes a difference and that's one of those things is paying attention to that yeah it's little it's details to kill you yeah know i mean we talked off camera and I, I said the big thing is is confidence we were at the mountain buck scouting camp with you and, and we we're talking to some of them guys up there they knew what they were doing but what was holding them back was that confidence. You know what I mean? Just that it's just it's that little thing that holds most guys back. It's either confidence or just a little tweak here and there. It's something they they got in the habit of doing that that's hurting them. You know, a lot of guys know what they're doing. They just they, they can't take that next step because they're just not confident. Yeah, you know? and and it's and having that confidence comes from experience of having one of those good encounters or anything yeah. to do it because it is it is difficult like i i sometimes i lack confidence in areas that i don't have history with yeah and i'm sitting there three days and i don't see a deer yeah you know but there's other areas that i know well from experience that okay even if i don't see deer for three days i'm still in a good yeah. spot yeah. for this time oh yeah. yeah and yeah. you got and pay attention to that. And the doe group thing is another thing i i think people should really write down it's like okay yeah you see something oh, yeah. or an area gets hot and there's a specific group like i can I'm thinking of it in my mind as one spot where I there was there's always four does that bed in this one little area and right around Halloween oh, one yeah. of those does yeah. comes in and it's like it brings in all the bucks yep. from the area. I see it. It lasts for like two or three days and yeah. then it changes. Yeah, I've seen it consistently over years in certain areas. I it pretty much you can set your watch to it that that a couple of does are going to start coming to heat and. Then, you get that first doe or two, end of October, and you can have some fun. You can draw a lot of big bucks in. <laughs> yeah, you you, yep. you totally can. Yep. yep. And I'll never forget that time in uh, 2020. I was on the ground, and I was working my way up towards that doe group. And at this time, I didn't know this This is the first year hunting this area. And I, but I knew these does always better there because I'd bump them sometimes. And I was walking up to it after I'd sat all morning and moving up. And all of a sudden, I... Uh, I think I grunted and I hit the bleak can and I heard some crash and this doe comes run right at mm. me and there's a spike, a four point, and then the buck I was hunting. Yeah. Running right by, like running right, like tongues hanging out. Oh, yeah. Chasing that doe yeah. around. And then I, I didn't get the, the shot opportunity that I wanted. And I went and sat up hunting that doe group for the next few days. The three does were back there, the younger ones that were there. Mama was being locked down with that oh, yeah. boy. You know yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what was happening there. Yeah. Just missed it. <laughs> yep. That's yep. exactly yep. right. But, no, your, your, your discussion about confidence is just so big. You hear all the guys that are successful in doing it. And the, the, the important thing to note, and we all talked about this at the end of the scouting camp, was any one of us that were up there that had – consistent success every year 99.5 percent of the time we're in the woods we're failing like oh, everybody else we talked about that i'm telling you i get my ass kicked every single day all season just it <laughs> comes together for that 5 15 second whatever it is window you know it just 
you know, that's where just putting the time in the tree, having a confidence in your ability comes into play. Um, but trust me, there's days I told people before, I said, me and Jesus have a lot of talks in the morning walking the street, you know, because it gets tough. You know what I mean? But it's our passion when we do it, but it's hard. And you got to overcome that. You know what I mean? You understand it's hard just for us. Like you said, we've talked prime areas, game rich areas. Yes, it's a little different story. Not saying those guys don't work hard, but a guy that's on public or pressure private, you're going to get your balls kicked in some. And you got to accept that. Some years it's going to be easy, other years you may eat a tag. You got to accept that. Just put your time in. You're going to be more consistent typically. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to tag out more often than not. Yeah. You know, with that mindset. And I do think there's a little bit of people taking the information wrong with like, all right, mobile hunting is so big right now. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and depending on where you're at, bouncing around all the time, isn't the always the trouble. best, the, isn't always yes. the best tactic. Yes. You, well, yeah, how do you think I, about I, that? I, there is a time and a place. Like this is how I break down my year. Mm-hmm. Postseason scouting. You're getting all that information years past historical data. You're going to run your cameras in the summer. You're going to see what kind of quality of bucks you have. Your cameras are going to transition to your fall. You're going to get your bucks hard horn out. You're going to start putting a game plan together. Utilize that off your postseason scouting. Now your in-season scouting comes into play. All those puzzle pieces come together, your postseason, your trail camera data, your in-season scouting, you know where to be. Now you go in there and put your time in and kill. You know, that's how yep. you, that's, that's, that's the key to it. That's what you got to do. And you can be too mobile where if you don't have the confidence in your postseason, your trail cam data, your in-season scouting, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Um, especially in the big woods mountains, I'm a big believer. Farm country, you can get away with it a little bit more because it's, it's more, it, you're, you're, there's more deer there in general. You know yeah. what I mean? More target rich environment. But I noticed in the big woods mountains, you start chasing around, bouncing around, not saying you're not going to kill, um, but even hunting hot sign, you start doing it every day, you, you can start chasing your tail a little bit and, and not not fill your tag. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a big believer. Typically, I'll look at mine and say, we get in the last, I'll come back from a higher this year. If I tag out there that last week of October, first part of November, I'll come back, say, I, say I, don't have, I still have a PA tag. I get 12 days to hunt. I don't want to be in 12 different stands. I don't want to be in 12 different stands. I'm going to look, think back at my posting, Scott, look at my cameras. I got five spots that I feel pretty damn good in, that I'm going to put two, three days in or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm good, depending on the conditions, but I'm going to keep that under a handful of spots that I feel confident in and maybe only three of those spots I hit in 12 days. It just depends yeah. on the on what I'm seeing. If I'm see, if I'm in the chips, if everything's telling me to be there, long as I can get in and get out of there, thermals, wind, all that's good, there's no reason why I don't spend two, three days in a spot. And, yeah. and, kill. and I typically, a lot of guys are big that first time in. I've killed first time in. I've killed on day four or five, too. Yeah. You know, so that you got to tell you, you can chase your tail a little bit and bounce too much, in my opinion, in certain situations. Yeah. You know, I'm big on the kill tree. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, I scout a ton over the years. It takes a lot of years, decades to get these, you know, eventually log enough spots like that. It might not be the same tree that I consider a kill tree, but it's pretty damn close to that spot that I can go in and consistently kill them bucks end October in November in these certain areas. You know what I mean? Give me a handful of those spots and I'll consistently kill every year in any state. You yeah. Know? No, I, I I think that's I think that's really valuable information and, and like and being able to identify those spots and like picking that right tree because one time you can find a really good spot, but if you don't set up correctly in it yeah. or have the right tree, like how do you? Wait, all right, so say you find a good spot that you want to set up in. How long does it take you, first of all, to pick a tree? <laughs> uh, it postseason scouting, it'll take me a little bit because you, you're starting to break down yeah. your thermals, your winds, and your access now. I think for me in the rut is is I will be aggressive. Not I'm going to say I'm I'm going to hunt a wind direction blown to that creek crossing or in right into that bedding area. I like to find something where there's a lot of things coming together, a hub. Big, yep. You know what I mean? Three, four, five different terrain features, different habitats. There's a big, maybe there's a big primary scrape there, which a lot of times there is. But I can just hunt that. I might be able to hunt that same spot in two, three different trees, depending on, on the conditions. That's a spot that I'm looking keying in on. I'll take my time. I can hunt these two, three spots on a couple of different wind directions. Those are the spots that you, okay, you go in there one day, you need a west wind. Okay, you're northwest. I'm going to eliminate this, but I got four other factors that are in my favor. I'm going to gamble there in the rut. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to take that all day like that. I might give up a little bit, and it, 
it does bust. It, it has happened. He's come down there. It happens, you know. But I've seen, yes, those bucks will use the wind, and I've seen it where they don't. It yeah. just depends. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, yeah depends it on the buck. They're all different. They are all different. You know, I, I talked to Mike Perry on, on the podcast before, and he sees a lot of bucks, you know, run with the tailwind. Yep. And I've doing that. And, oh. and, and you see, and so there's not like this perfect scenario that they do all the time there. And, and being able to find, yeah, those trees where you, you bounce around. And I, I feel like most of the time when you're in a big wood setting specifically where there's not a ton of deer, that you can get away with hunting that tree so much more yeah, you or can. that area yeah. than, than yeah. you typically. In the farm country. Yeah, than yeah. you can in those I, I've done it in the farm country. You know what I mean? There's certain, like, if I'm hunting that hubs type yeah. area, even in, like, area I grew up, it's kind of a mixture of farm, hill country, even a little bit of big woods. It's, it's a bigger section, but... I the, the spot where I've killed four of my last five PA bucks, it's the same damn tree. And to be honest, it's just a big hub. I know I can go in there on multiple wind directions, hunt it multiple days. I'm going to kill. I'll get a couple. I don't have a camera like set right on that spot, off that on some scrapes. I get a couple shooters in there. I just got to put time in. I'm going to kill them. That's what happens in areas like that. Once I get that history built up in those hubs, um, they're deadly. I mean, that's a go-to for me in a rut in those situations. So when you said four out of the five last you know your last bucks out of the same tree mm -hmm. what is it around the same time uh, they changed i've killed this one was october 27th the past year um he was in there bumping does or looking for does bumping them out of beds um she wasn't ready but she still got him in trouble um the other times they've either been on you know november say i can't try and recall the dates november 6th november 12th i've killed him anywhere from last week october through the first two weeks or whatever in november to our season goes out i've hit killed him in different time frames over the years you know what i mean and it's just it just you find locations they're hard to find if you can find them and if you're not i'm not after a particular buck per se i'm after a quality there's yep. three or four solid okay i'll kill either one of these that's all i'm looking for one of them are coming through here in the next three days. I'm gonna. That's how I hunt. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, maybe eventually I'll go to where I'm hunting a certain buck. I just uh, I don't have that mindset yet for that. I just I'm just happy to kill a good buck every year. Same. I hear you. Yeah. And like okay, so with, with that spot, what do you think? Like you're talking about it being the hub, and you know, there's mm -hmm. multiple travel corridors and train. But what what does that look like uh, as far as what's the terrain look like in that spot? And then we're going like vegetation. That, I, uh, basically, there you're basically sitting in between multiple doe bedding or bedding areas in general. I yeah. believe there's doe bed. There, I think all deer bed and bedding areas. That's yeah. kind of my opinion with that. Um, but there, there's a very large creek bottom that's a bedding area. It's a ridge. It's actually on some prop property. It's thick, and they basically cruise back and forth. There's actually a steep cliff side there, and a couple of draws on either side of that. And it's basically I'm sitting in the middle of the X, and they come up that draw, and then bucks will just cruise that, looking for them does all day. I mean, to be honest with you, the best times for me is midday in there. I see a ton of action midday. Um, but basically you're just in the middle of an intersection you know what i mean there's there's i don't know how many trails six seven eight how many trails are in there but it's just basically you're right in the middle of that intersection that cross and i got a tree in there and be honest with you, i get people walk by me on this trail there's actually a gas line there people i wave to them they walk by and i kill you know three and a half plus bucks out of there you know year old bucks out of there every year and the only problem in that area is the quality's not you know, you get up in southern mountains there, you start getting in your bigger 140 plus. But you go in there, I kill Saul Pope and Young Buck you yeah. know, every year, which I'm, I'm happy with that. Heck you know what yeah. I mean for PA? Um, but it's just, a, it's just a spot that I've learned over the years. If I put some time in there, I'm probably going to error something half decent. You know what I mean? Um, I'm be honest with you, I, I've, I've done been pretty successful in that spot. I don't want to kill there anymore because I want to go into big woods and try it in these mountains. Yeah. And I'm getting on some pretty big slobs. Not, not be honest with you, 120 some inch eight point is by. It's going to be hard for me to pass up. I'm at, I'm at heart of my PA boy, you know what I mean. Yeah. When I travel our states, yeah, I'll be a little more pickier. But uh, PA people don't realize it's hard to kill 120 inch deer on. on yeah, it, 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 is. it is. is. It is. It gets tough. That's why I try to tell guys, don't get tied up in that social media stuff. Kill what you want to kill, um, because be honest with you, I've done this a long time. Killed a lot of deer. Um, be proud of whatever you kill, but it's hard to kill 110, 150, 120 inch deer on a pressured area. You know, then bucks don't usually live past two and a half once rifle season comes in. No, you know, it's, it's 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 very few in certain areas. You know. Yeah, and and you know, there was a guy that came up to the booth that uh, at at Toro Archery Challenge here that said something about I hadn't killed a buck um, ever before, and he's been archery hunting for nine years, and you know, kind of asking some questions. Yeah, and he was like holding out for you know a big deer, and it's like, man. Yeah. You gotta get those reps in, and, yeah, and if you, you want to yeah. change your goal, that's fine. But like that, and it, obviously everyone has their own thing. But to me, it seemed like that that came from the outside pressures of yeah. this is what you're supposed yeah. to do. Yeah, you, you, this is probably wrong to say, but to get good, you have to kill. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, to get your confidence up. But don't you don't need to chase 140, 130 inch deer, whatever area. You might be in Iowa and trying to kill a Boone and Crockett every year, but maybe you should be killing the one forties to get good. You yeah. know what I mean? But like around here, I don't if it's legal, it makes you happy, but you're just gonna become a better hunter in the day. You know, the more you do that. Then you know what? You get you get to the point where you're satisfied, then start up in that bar. You know what I mean? Hey, I like to kill Boone and Crockett every year. Damn I, that's my goal to kill gross Boone and Crockett. That is my number one pass, number one goal to kill as a whitetail hunter. It's going to be pretty damn hard if I keep passing deer on, you know, here in uh, PA. It's going to be a long freaking time, if ever, if I get that opportunity. Yeah. So you got to be realistic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you definitely do. Yeah. You, you definitely got to be realistic with it and understanding those expectations and what lives in your area yes. and what's actually yeah. The, yeah. the potential. Not just because it's on your camera means that you're necessarily going to going to kill it that doesn't mean you shouldn't have big goals and yes, expectations yes, and yep. and we all do you know yep, you and i, I have like go every year my my to be honest with you for pa i'm uh, three and a half 120 is yep. my baseline um i'm going to try to up that you know what i mean but i told you i i, I like to kill them too yeah you know what i mean i, I it's just the passion that's why we do this but i'm trying to up that bar a little bit take some time you know what i mean but it, it is what it is you know yeah no it, it, it definitely is it's, it's difficult it's hard and be happy with with being able to yeah to to be able to do that and i look at it this way too like for me and you know talk a lot on here of hunting mature bucks and doing mm-hmm. all that and and that's mostly because that's where i'm at is and yep. i've been doing yep. it for long enough that that's where my goal is but like when i go out west it's all new to me. Yeah. I'm just yeah. trying, I'm trying to get reps in. I'm trying to kill whatever bull elk that I can see. Yep. I'm trying to kill whatever yes. mule deer I can see and just have those opportunities because that's how you get better. Yes. That's why I tell a lot of guys, don't get tied up in social media. Hunt your own hunt. You know what I mean? Enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get tied up in it. If somebody's going to be an asshole and put negative comments, uh, just ignore it. You know what I mean? You know, I, I call that that little dick syndrome. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Don't worry about guys like that. You know what I mean? Because pretty much they're not killing anything anyway. They're just jealous. No. You know? And they don't affect you. They're not the ones yeah. that's going to eat it there with your family. They're not yeah. the ones that yeah. get to look at it all the yep. time. They, Yeah. That's not It's yep. not worth worrying about that. Nope. It's not worrying nope. about what anybody's going to think about except for nope. yourself. Nope. You're only going to get better if you get out there and do it. And you're, you know, consistently start getting successful in whatever age class you're after. You're just going to get better over the years doing that. You know, don't don't worry about everybody else. Yeah, no, I I agree. And and, and so like you're talking about like the the whole like 120 inch eight point. That's like it's your Pennsylvania eight pointer. Like that's what a lot of these bucks they'll never really get any, yeah. any bigger. Yeah, than I that. see a lot. I've killed quite a few, and that's you know, occasionally I said. I mean. For, for I run cameras all summer in the mountains of big woods, you know what I mean, lower deer density, you do pick up some bigger bucks. But really overall, I mean, you may get a half dozen bucks over 140, 130 inches, you think about it. And that's a lot of cameras. That's right? a lot of cameras. That's yeah. a lot of cameras too, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's 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 a needle in a haystack, you know what I mean? You get some areas that are a little better than others, um, but it's pretty hard to get you break that 130 mark in PA in a lot of areas, majority areas, yeah. you know. I know it's like I, I was talking to I had someone I don't remember who it was it was at my house and they're from a different state and looking at, at bucks on the wall I'm like how old do you think that deer would be you know you know two and a half three and a half year old I'm like oh that one's that's an eight and a half yeah, year old deer yeah, that's yeah. 125 inches like yeah. what and yep. it's like I got a 105 a, inch yeah. five year old on the wall <laughs> yeah he weighed like 220 pounds he was a toad but yeah, the rock wasn't that great, but I bound him because he was five and a half. I figured he was five and a half, yeah. you know what I mean, by, you know, aging him and that. But it's like, he was a big old hog. I was happy with him, you know. I didn't care about the rack. He was just big bodied, you know. Uh, I was talking to a guy here that just so happens to hunt an area that I used to hunt. And uh, where he was like, man, he goes, I, we're killing these older deer. He goes, but. They're not, he goes, some of them are 105 inches, yeah, 110 yeah, inches. Yeah. He goes, and he showed me pictures of them. And I was oh, like, yeah. I, and I ran cameras yep. in that area thinking because it was like this remote, tough to access yeah. spot, but there was no, there wasn't good browse. It was all big timber yeah. spots. They, they weren't the doing timber yep. cuts. They weren't doing this yep. stuff. And I was finding rubs on trees that you would have thought a 180 <laughs> was making. And literally it'd be these heavy pop cam based yeah. little tiny yeah. things that were coming out yeah. of their head well that's funny with the big sign like a lot of the areas i find i find a lot of these big bucks i don't find big signs yeah I, that's what's crazy there's areas i hunt it's like there's world-class animals running around and there's nothing bigger than your wrist yeah rough. it is crazy then you pull trail cameras and some like out of the state locations i hunt it's like holy shit like they don't leave no damn sign other than tracks you you never know in your trail cameras it's crazy yeah Yep. Yeah, and it's it's difficult to look at a scrape and be able to tell, you know, what yeah. size yep. size buck is. I, yeah, I always use pick the, up on his track a little bit there. It, it's hard to tell. Yeah, you know what I mean, I, I always use the, the rule of thumb, like 
And like my dad always would say, like you know, you find a licking branch the size of your thumb that's all twisted. Yeah. It, usually it's it's a mature buck that's doing that. You can't. Yeah. That's about what you can get. Yeah, yeah. Get I mean, that's my that. preferred scrape. If I could find one with multiple licking branches, all oh the thumb, yeah, big thumb size, or whatever. Yeah, it usually gets me pretty excited when I've seen it's been pounded for a decade. You know what I mean? The dirt's dug out and multiple scrapes around it. And if you can find those little honey holes, it's well those yeah, those, those four those hours fun. you and I spent together when we were doing the scouting camp with some of the other guys there. Like it was hilarious. We come up, we see, <laughs> yeah. and we were on uh, we were on unpressured private ground yeah. Yeah. so like things were more prominent yeah, yeah. but holy cow we were we'd find these yeah. these, these li- we'd find yeah. five six seven lincoln uh, branches broke, and we're all like getting fired oh uh, i'm telling you it's, <laughs> it's bad it's 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 almost embarrassing sometimes my poor wife she i feel bad for the, the shit she's sure got to go hear oh she like hears every detail of the scouting trips of the hunting every trail camp look at this buck you know she just you know she supports me, but yeah, she, she <laughs> smiles yeah. and, and gets like, you pumped uh, up. But yeah, whatever, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. So you're gonna uh, be focusing on Pennsylvania again this year, Ohio. It sounds like. Yeah, I'll be down in Ohio. Um, um, heading down there in a few weeks, hang some cameras uh, with our buddy Johnny Stewart yeah. down there. Um, a lot of my time being PA. Um, I think uh, between those two states, I've been looking. I may go up to New York. I think because our bear season comes in during their rifle season, I guess I might go up there just have some fun, go in some state grant game lands up there or whatever. Go, you know, decent buck comes by. I'm not, I'm not trophy hunting or anything up there. Just something, have some yeah. fun. And then uh, I'm looking into some other states. Um, Kentucky's kind of taking the lead for me right now. Not maybe this year, um, but what I want to do is maybe get to at least four states a year. So it's maybe like Kentucky, Ohio, PA, and then maybe New York just to go up just a little bit of rifle hunting. You know what I mean? In a downtime yeah. in our state. So that's kind of what I'm looking into here right now in the future. Um, you know, I pretty much hunted. I've hunted other states. I've done pretty good in other states. But to be honest with you, over the last decade, I pretty much have just hunted PA. I'm 45, and to be honest with you, I, I want to start killing a couple bucks a year. It, to be honest, just my goal. Yeah. Kill a couple good bucks a year. That's kind of my goal where I'm heading right now. I like it. Well, if you want to go up to New York, let me know. I, lo- yeah. I like going up there yeah. and playing yeah, around. Game. So. Oh, game, man. I actually got a camera. I, I only left one camera up there, but it's been sitting there. I just thought of it now. I forgot about yeah. it. So, but we'll- <laughs> Yeah, I'm playing on maybe like August. I was just going to take a ride up for a day just yeah. get a feel for the land look at some maps on spartan forge and like you know what i'm gonna go there <laughs> with yeah. the rifle and see what the hell happens you know what i mean yeah just, just have, have fun, fun with yeah that's all i do is have, that's just have fun like we used to in the good old days because as much as the passion this is we do uh maybe take a little too far sometimes and, yeah. and, and it does get stressful you know what i mean when you put so much time and effort and it's a tough season so uh sometimes it's nice to take a step back that's why i like doe hunting you know it's fun you know what I mean? And then maybe something like New York to go up and just uh, relax a little bit, enjoy it. Well, a that's, more. What, that's what I did last year in yeah. New York. And, and actually, after I dropped that camera off, I remember being like, I don't want to run cameras here. I want to make this a hunt that I can do yeah. every year that I don't have cameras. That's kind of I what I was go looking. Yep. and go and yeah. have fun. That's kind of what I was looking it. at. Just go up and, uh, you know, use a little bit of your woodsmanship. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I'll have a Spartan Forge, use that technology there just so I don't get freaking lost. But other than that, just see what i see and, and go off that gut feeling and see if we can get cracked something yeah you know that's what I, i'm gonna do i like it man yeah yep well cool hopefully uh we'll have to get together and do some more scouting oh, yeah. together for sure, stuff. Man. that'd for be sure. fun uh yeah. to, to get to do that and walk around and it definitely involve old johnny stewart oh you gotta bring johnny yeah you gotta bring <laughs> you johnny, to bring johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's definitely entertainment one of the most intelligent white tail hunters you'll ever get to talk to but good lord, is he freaking hilarious? When oh. he comes out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah, every I, I can't tell you how many times I'm I'm sick of people. Not sick of. I'm joking, but like people coming up to the booth and be like, "Where's Johnny? Where's Johnny? At? <laughs> Where's Johnny at?" Yeah, he's a celebrity now, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's he's awesome. Yeah, he is. Good dude. Good dude. There. Well, anyways, Moose, where can people find you on social media? Check out some of your stuff. And uh, you can find me on Instagram. I really don't do the Facebook stuff. Uh, but get me on Instagram, uh, Moose seventeen twenty. Uh, you'll usually hear me on there Saturday out in my scouting trip, stuff like that. You know, anybody wants some help, needs some pointers or whatever, hit me up. I'm always free to talk. I like bullshit and whitetails. I'll help anybody. So, yep. And but only one thing, one rule: don't ask spots. Yeah, don't ask spots. Come on. There's a couple of you guys. Come on, man. I'll help you as much, but I'm not giving you pins. Uh, all right, man. Thank you so hey, much. Appreciate for it, man. On. Thanks for having me on. All right.